talk about, if we have time, if not, I'll save one thing, two real, two different topics. One shorter one and one somewhat larger. The first topic I want to talk about is um, divine justice. It's called Torah Tegmul, so to speak, in Yehezkel. Um, the reason I want to talk about this, and the second topic I want to talk, which is longer, Ma'asim uh, Simliyim in Yehezkel. The reason I want to talk about Gmul is because looking, I think today you did Perik Lamed Dalid, right? Today you did Perik oh, Lamed Dalid. Today was Lamed Dalid. <laughs> So you're the only one who knows that it was Lamed <laughs> Dalin. So, all right. So then, okay. There goes that reason. All right. Um, so, so really, what I wanted to do really is talk about Perik Lamed Gimel was the Perik of the Sofe, which talks about, on some level, this idea. Uh, yes, Kel makes this point a few times. Um, two, I would call, more major places and two more minor places. In a minor place, in short, is in Peregimah, Sukim Yud Zayin Tekafalev, which is the first time we see the Nivua of the Sofe. Right? And it says, Ben Adam Sofenet Atik Lebe Yisrael Veshamata Mepi Davar Vizharta Ota Mimeni Veomri Lerasha Mot Tamut Velo Yisharto Velo Dibarta Al Zir Rasha Midarko Arashah Hayato Hu Rasha Bavono Yemut Vedamo Miyadcha Avakesh If you don't say anything, you have to say something. If you don't say anything, you are going to be responsible for his death. He's going to die. But if you do say something, you saved your life. Right? And the Sadiq who changes his path is not going to save him. Right? But, and if you want the Sadiq and he doesn't sin, right, he's careful and you also save your life. That's the whole, it seems to be Perik Gimel, this abridged version of the Perashat HaSovei and Perik Lamid Gimel. Um, another important place is the entire Perik Yud Het. The entire Perik Yud Het has this discussion here in which he talks about, again, personal accountability. And here he does it again within the message of Teshuvah. Right, and here it's to rebuke the famous mashal, avot asub achlu yochlu boser v'shine habanim tchenna. Right, literally the um, the fathers eat the sour, sour grape, and the uh, the teeth of the children are blunted or set on edge. Right, set on edge is there. Okay. So in other words, that the father's sins are being brought upon the children. Now, this is this bizarre mashal that Yehazkel says, well, what are you talking about? Well, well, we know it's really a pasuk in the Torah, right? Poked avon avot al-banim. Al-banim So, you know, he says, where'd you get that from? Right? And Hashem says, I'm not going to have this. And he says, a nefesh ha'otet tamut. Yeah. Now, just to think, so you didn't think of the, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, the Gemara in Masechet Makot, Tafchaf Dalit Amut Alif, counts this as one of the four times Moshe, it says, Moshe said four Gzerot and four Nevi'im that came after him came and were Mevatel Divrei Moshe Rabbeinu. That's the Gemara Makot. And one of them is this Pasuk in Yehezkel. Vis-a-vis Poked Avon Avot Al-Banim. 
And Yehezkel says, Hanefesh HaHotet, he tamut. Now, we'll talk about that at the end, what that Gemara means. It's obviously a problematic Gemara, theologically. But nevertheless, what the Gemara seems to point is that Yehezkel is radically committed to one concept, that there's a personal responsibility. The sinner will die for his sins on three levels, and you see this really in the Medgima more than anything, the sinner will die. Nothing can save the sinner. Not the tzitkut not his, of his parents, or not even his own tzitkut, not of his own righteousness prior to his sinning. That will not save him either. Right? Um, that's important. Now, um, in addition to that, if you go another place, <laughs> right? Um, another place where we find a little bit of a similar idea is in Perik Yud Dalit, right? Um, let's take a look. Perik Yud Dalit, Pasuk Yud Bet. Where right? Even righteous forefathers can't save the sinner. And this is, we won't deal with this now, but this is another famous topic, maybe another time we'll look at. They will just save themselves. And if you go to Kaf, So a righteous parent, a tzaddik cannot save the rasha, and even a parent. Right, cannot be saved by his righteous. Uh, another, even the son cannot be saved by his righteous parents. So, in other words, it's the final acts. It's very clear that Yehoshua is making the statement over and over again. A person's final acts, not his earlier acts, not his family acts. Nothing can save him. Well, right. In other words, that type of thing. This is it. What he does now, but. But Hashem Hashem over there, the Midrash is being brought to do what? To say that I won't judge him by his later acts. I'm judging him how he is now as his prior act. Yeah. What well, Yeskel seems to be saying over and over again, it's the, it's the end. Uh, yeah. It's the end as to where you are right now, what you did before. It's the sort of flip side of Teshuvah. Mm -hmm. Teshuvah enables the, righteous, the evil to become righteous. And this Gmul enables also the righteous to become evil. It's the same idea. Now, um, there are some questions to this from Yehezkel himself. If you open Yehezkel Kaf Aleph, does anyone want to read it? Yehezkel Kaf Aleph Gima. In other words, The idea here is I'm sorry, the next, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go a little further. I'm sorry. See but one second, I'll tell you. Uh, I wrote it wrong. Yeah, go to Het. Het Tet, that's what I meant. Right, 
Right, so here we have this idea that there is no difference between the Sadiq and the Rasha. And there is no personal accountability. But somehow the Sadiq is going to be filled in with the Avon Ayir, right? Gibanan Abu Dazara points this out as a stila with Yahaskir. And they make a halu. Kan be Sadiq Gamur, Kan be Sadiq She'enu Gamur. We can add to that, which seems to be really the context. The context of a collective damage and a collective punishment, it seems to be built here. In other words, we have collective punishment when it comes to Hurban. When it comes to Hurban, Sadiq and Rasha are going to die in this one massive collective punishment. What Yaskel seems to be talking about throughout is on a more individual basis, right? They're saying, we didn't do anything wrong, our fathers did it, and we're being punished, right? So they're saying, no, and Yaskel keeps talking about the theoretical divine justice. In this case, of course, as Yaskel, as well as other Nebi'im do, we seem to have a situation um, where, yes, the Sadiq and the Rasha will die in the, in, in the measures of Hurban. Um, I want to look at one other pedic here. Pedic Kaf Bet. Let me make sure I got this down right correctly first. Yeah. Pasuk Lamin. So here, you're finding an interesting idea. What does that mean? It says, Borei Olam sought out what? To do what? That would sort of be Protect good. all the Rishayim. Uh, what happens here? Good. What, what, what does he try? Bavakesh me ish godet gader ve omed ba peretz lefanai. What is Omed Bab Ish Goder Gader? It's like Goder Peretz in Yeshaya. To do what? To do what? Lechorah means to save them. To save the city. No, by protecting the. Yeah, I was thinking to influence the people. Yeah, he's killing the Gaders. Okay, so, okay, so I think what he's looking for here, I'm a little bit of what you're saying, but let me just go a little bit more. In other words, um, a potential here is a he's looking he's complaining about a lack of leadership, mm -hmm. a lack of leadership, or as some of Shim here say, or to prevent them from sinning, or whatever it is. A he's looking here for a manhig mm -hmm. to set the people on the right path. That's the point. It's right. There is nobody right. In other words. There, there's a pedit, I mean, there's an openness, right? Reminds us a little bit of a heta egil, right? Where there was just no leadership, right? Yeah. So that can be here, and so therefore that may also not contradict um, this idea. Now, one other point about this idea of gemul. What is, from the very beginning, the Nevi's stated goal, or God's stated goal for Yehazkel's Nebuah? Uh -huh. They should know that an avi is amongst them, right? That's that was is it to be mahzirotam b'tshuva? No, just let them know that an avi was there. Speak as we see in Perik Bet, correct? I think we see a change towards the end of the book from that goal. In other words, I don't think that that's the stayed goal. That goal stays um, when you have the nevuah. Some of you may have read yesterday in Perik Lamid Gima, certainly in the Yedhayat, but definitely in Perik Lamid Gima, where you have this entire discussion of Tishuba, right? Right, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to run through this very fast now. I'm going to read it like 20 Sukim Speedy. Just yeah, assuming. <laughs> 
This is about a scalp. But so fair, he read the head of Babylon to Kabu Shofar, but I'm not his heart, but the head of the Kabu him nafish, who Babylon will carve with the mummy at Sophie Idrosh. But Tabin Adam, you are the Sophie. Now, I, I think Perik Gima is a summary of Perik Lamed Gima, inserted in the beginning almost as a precursor because it, uh, there's a mashal and a nimshal. Now, it's very interesting that the mashal and the nimshal are very close. And that happens a lot in Yeskel, where the mashal and the nimshal intertwine. Here, what's the mashal? The mashal is the guy who's watching the war. If he hasn't watched the war, he's responsible for people's deaths. This is also a war, right? In other words, so also here, you are a sofe. What's the responsibility of the Nabi? The responsibility of the Nabi is to get him to do Teshubah. And if you don't rebuke him and he doesn't do Teshubah, you're responsible. Now, if you fail, as long as you try, that's fine. But it's clear you're supposed to try. Yeah. It's clearly the idea and the ultimate goal here is Teshubah. This is their complaint. It's very clear. This is not just simply be at Uki Nabi Betocha. But you read this Pasuk Rabbi Meir, right? Right. They should do the also brings a proof from Mitamu Hataim, Hataim with the Hadar. Okay, Vata Ben Adam, a model Ben Amek has it cut at Sadiko Yaseno Bem Shaw. Then we go back to the same idea. But the Shatra Shah, like a Shah Babi Yom Shu Womir Shaw, with Sadiko Yukhali Hyotba. Be Yom Hatoto. Right? This entire idea of now. So there, there seems to be a change. What is the reason for the change? I think the reason for the change has to do with chronology. When are these nevoid? When is Lamid Gimel said? Well, in Kaf Aleph, which is right after, we see where is it said? When is this nevoid said? After the Hurban. Right? Right? And then he speaks. And he's open, his mouth is now opened, he's allowed to speak. The idea, and of course, this is the last of the nevoid of. Puranut, as you'll read later, Nevoat Nehama, the rest of your Haskell is mostly Nevoat Nehama. Lamedal is a mixture because you have the the uh, the Ra'im, the Nevoat of the Ra'eh, which is the rebuke to the Ra'eh, but sort of letting the people off. That's, I think, today's pity. So, the idea here is post it's almost pre Hurban and post Hurban. Right? Pre Hurban. Know that there's a Navi here. There's nothing to get them to do tshuva. It's almost not going to happen. Just let them know there is nevuah. 18, 18 is also about tshuva. That's a good point. I'll get to that. But I would say pre hurban the beginning, beginning, there's nothing really to talk about. I just have to set the scale to sort of let, set the record. I want to set the record straight. I want you to know you had a Navi. So when the time comes, I'm going to sort of say, I told you so. I'm sort of going to say, it's time for you to, to turn around. I can't do that now. You're not going to listen. I have no track record. I have no proof. So let me just let's set a ne nevi. Yud het seems to be the turning point. It seems if to be, although we don't have a specific date here, but we seem to, Im but it seems to be that there is a imminent trouble coming. The people are suffering because they're the ones saying, So they seem to be in trouble. I don't know if it's pre Hodban or post, but if it's pre, it's like Hodban is imminent. We 
you know Yirmiyahu has said the same thing, so it right. could be very well be that it's right. pretty pragmatic. It's very possible, but I would say it's very close to the Hurban. So that's why it's sort of on the Tshuva end, meaning there's a shift. The shift in Yehezkel is away from they should know there's a Nevi, because that is in the beginning. That, so to speak, I want to go on record to say these things. And the shift now is, certainly after the Hurban, a little bit at, during the Hurban, is now it's time for the Navi to tell the people, okay, it's time to do Teshuvah. The Hurban has come. You've seen it. I need you to do Teshuvah. I need you now to understand, to bring, the, we, 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 and move forward towards the Geulah. That's really why after Lamed Gimel, when he really talks about the Shuba, we begin Nevo'ot Nehama. Yehazkel's idea of Shuba is not do the Shuba or else the Hurban is going to come. It doesn't say that. It's do the Shuba. You just have to do the Shuba. Because most probably, I mean, clearly in Lamed Gimel, the Hurban has come. I've, I've set my right. You've, you've realized that a Nevi was Bechakid Bechem. You have to realize that. Now, now that I've set that record straight, now I want you to now do Teshubah. And I just want to go back to this idea, this, this, just the side point, this, this Gemara in Makot that says that Bechazkel was Mevatil Gzirat Moshe. So the Mepharshi will have a problem with that Gemara. Right? We have a theological problem, right? Um, Abarbanel has an interesting way of doing it. He says, no. Really, there's no stira. And it's based on Harambam and the Mishneh uh, Torah. That's on little children. Because they not have their own hashbon. All right. And Nefesh Ha'adati Tamud is Gdolim. Harambam himself makes a haluk between Avodazara and everything else. And now you need why there's a Shinui. Why? Because Avodazara. During the time of Yehazkel, it was Hurban by Chini. What, 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 what was lost? Yisaraf Abu Dazara. So now Yehazkel can say confidently on everything and never shall say the Tabu. Shadal is an interesting perush. And Shadal says, right, Poked Avon Avot Al Bani means that God, through his infinite wisdom, and this is the Bedin Shilmala, can actually bring. Teshubah through the child. In other words, but without doing anything that anyone should get any unfair punishment. Right? And that only could be with Bedin Shalmala. Right? That only can happen there. But Bedin Shalmata, lo yumtu avot al banim, or banim lo yumtu al avot. Bedin Shalmata, we can't have that. But the Hezbon of Borei Olam can figure it out so precisely that everyone will suffer exactly what they needed to get, and no one will suffer unless they and everyone around them deserve that to happen, right? The child, the child doesn't, the, the father won't die unless the child deserves to be an orphan, so to speak. So the, 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 that inspires everyone to do chuba to that point. When Yehazkel, says Shaddal, is dealing with a misinformed public, that don't understand the nuances of that theology. They don't understand how that could be possible. They're questioning it. Avot of So yes, Kale eradicates that. No, 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 stop. Okay, that's for an audience that understands. This, my audience doesn't understand, so I'm going to say the simple truth. That's how some of the Mepharshim deal with that Gemara and what it means that Yehazkel was mevatel, uh, the Torah Tikkun of the Torah. Okay. Um, having said that, I want to go now to a different topic, second topic for the night, which is the simliyut. Yeah. As you've no doubt known, the idea of semel, symbolic actions, while not unique to Yehazkel, we've seen it in Yirmiya, we've seen it in Yeshaya, right? We see it elsewhere, Hoshea. But it takes a new life in Yehazkel. In other words, Yirmiya does funny things. 
right? He puts the oil on his things. He walks. Yeshaya goes Aron v'yahif. Um, Hoshea, of course, the Zona. But with Yehezkel, you can count, and I've seen different books count different amounts, right? This book counts 12 Ma'asim Simliim. Some of them may not be, I mean, it could, you know, I mean, some of the most obvious ones are, we'll talk about the Avotim, right? The sleeping on the, 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 um, the, the Levena with the Matzod, the Mahavat, the sleeping on the side for the Lehem Tameh. A lot of them are in the beginning, right? The cutting his hair, pulling it out. Um, the Kle Gola, right, taking him out. The, um, uh, the, his wife dying, right? The, the wife before that, really, the Shte Derachim that come out of one, Amon and Yerushalayim, right? Melech Babel is not sure which way he's going to go. The, the holding of the, what we didn't see yet, is the holding of the two Etzim together. Uh, and there's more. Eating the scroll. Eating the scroll, right? There's a lot of things here that Yehezkel does much more than any other Nevi. <laughs> so the question of Ma'asim Simliyim seems to really impact a lot, almost all the Mafashim. Yes. Now, first of all, the overwhelming purpose of all the Ma'asim Simliyim, with the exception really of, I think, only one, is to scare the people, right? We want to scare the people to do tshuva. The one exception, of course, is the one ma'ase simli that's nehama, which is the two sticks. And that's, that ma'ase simli is nehama. That's its own unique situation. But all the other ma'asim simliim is to, seems to be to scare the people to do tshuva. Right? So that's, that seems to be. Now, the question of these ma'asim simliim really are the perplexing all the Mepharshim. All the Mepharshim are trying to make sense of what's going on here. Right? Um, I'll first talk in general terms, and then I'll talk about more specific ones. First of all, of course, the biggest and the, the most concentrated Ma'asim, really, four or five of them that I mentioned are all in Pedic Dalit bin Hay. One after the other, right? The, uh, the Levena, the Mahavat, the lying down, the eating of the Laham Tamir, the Galahim. That's Those five cases are all in Pedic Dalit bin Hay, right? So many of the Mafarshim are questioning, right? And they debate. And I'm going to try and put two main schools, but there's even going to be more than two main schools in general, and then we'll go to some ma'asim specifically and look at some of the fashion, what they have to say, what they mean. But of course, the question is, did they really happen, right? Did, did the Nevi really do all those things? So, we know, um, we know the very famous Ibn Ezra, Ibn Ezra by Hoshea. Ibn Ezra says, Read to you one of them. Right? He says, "Halila, halila, she is savei Hashem lakahat eshet zinunim ulahadid yal de zinunim. Vahayon beinai kizia nevi ayano eben marot nevoa b'halom alayla Hashem alo lech kach lechai eshet zinunim. V'kach ayal yeshaya nevi ziyabedir kilama yalech nevi arom ba'avur kushu misrayim." Based on that, sort of a semi talmid of Ibn Ezra, which is the uh, perush of Menachem ben Shimon. Based on that, he says, in the beginning of Dalit, Perik Dalit, pas, beginning, I think it's Pasuk Gimel, in the perush of Rabbi Meir ben Shimon, he wants to say that the Nevoot in this Perik Okay. 
כי כל אלה העניינים שציווה השם הנביא לעשותם להיות עוד פורענות לישראל, ואם כך להבנה, גם שכב על צדך השמאלי, גם ואתה כך לחיתים, דפות, גם העברת טל על הראש הזקן, לא עשה אותם נביא בר קיצקים בחלום. וכן דעת רבי אברהם בן עזרא. והעד שאמר הנביא בתחילת ספרו במראה במות אלוהים. ואשר ראוי להיות קשה בינינו בכל אלה עניינים, איך יצווה השם לנביא לטמא עצמו בכיס בגלילי צואת האדם. ואין זה הדת סוברת. Then he goes into a share. So basically, the marot Elohim extend to all of Perik Dalad and here, according to the Menachem ben Shimon. Harambam, the Moreh Nebuchim, right? Helik Bet, Perik Memvav, we saw it. Brings a similar idea that the Tara Galavim, the food, the sleeping on the side, Yeshayaz Aron Beyohef, coming to Yerushalayim, all of that um, is Benevoah, he says, quotes it. Ki me advarim abrurim asher lo yitay bahem ish divrei yehezkel. Ani yoshev bebeti batisa otorich ruach ben ha'aretz uber ha'shamayim. He didn't really actually fly. ותביא אותי ושם במלות אלוהים, כן דיברו אליו, אתה בן אדם, קח לך לבנה, אתה שכב על צדך השמאלי, קח לך חייטי מוסורים, קח לך חרב חדת, תער הגלבים, ואתה ראשון זקניך, כל זה ראה במראה הנבואה שהוא עשה את המעשה אלו שנצטרך לעשות. ואין נעלה מכדי שישים את נביאיו לצחוק ולעג בעיני השוטים, ויצווה עליהם לעשות מעשים לא מקובלים. אברבנל has a sort of middle שיטה. He says, yes, things that are said בעלי במות אלוקים, that's in a vision. But the other things, דלת אין הי, דלת אין במות אלוקים. Yeah. אה, נביאים are going to look foolish? Yeah. נביאים are not these highfalutin, necessarily respectable people. Yeah. נביאים could look like fools. And God is doing, they have a purpose. And if they look like fools, so be it. Um... So Abarbanel doesn't see that as a ta'ana, why should Nevi'im look like, oh yeah, if you're supposed to walk around naked in the street, okay. So people think he's crazy? So they think he's crazy. No big deal. God has a focus here for this. The, the God is sending the Nevi to accomplish a mission. It's, they're not kings. They're not the people that necessarily have to, right? Sometimes... The Nebi'im in their actions, says Abarbanel, will look foolish, and sometimes not. By Yeshaya, we never see him being called a fool. By Yirmiya, we do think people think he's foolish. Which other Nevi is called a fool? In Nebi'im Rishonim, by the Sarim Bav Yehu, when Yeshaya says his thing, he says, who's this fool? Davka Yehezkel, we find something interesting about Yehezkel. Whatever Marot he did, what, 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 what impression of him did that create on the people? A few prakim ago. A few prakim ago. Huh? What? What was the impression that the children that the children of Israel had of Yehezkel? Oh, just now? I said that they think he's making things up. He's making things up. Not just now. What did you go to you? What? Why didn't he? Ken. In other words, he was. Oh, he was a good storyteller. That's what I mean when I said making things up. No, but he, no, no, no. It didn't, they didn't think he's making it up. He was. They came for. He was a good actor. He was entertainment. In other words, they come and they they looked at him as an entertainer. What? The end. Right. In other words, what he says, if you look at the end of Lamid Gimel, you'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, Eskel's not looked at a fool. They actually like to come and listen to him. But, of course, he's upset about it because he wants them to come and listen for his mission. And what are they coming to listen to him? 
right? הנדברים בך אצל הקירות ובתי הבתים מדבר חד את הד איש את אחיו לאמור בואו נא ושימו מה הדבר יוצא מאת השם כי אם בוא עם וישבו לפניך עמי ושבו דבר אבותם לא יעשו כי הגאווים בפיהם הם העושים They make song out of what you do This is entertainment והנחה להם כשיר הגאווים יפה קול ומיטיב נגן ושם ידעו את דבריך יש קל הוא איזה כריזמטיק וואו Stories, this, singer, he's got a good voice. <laughs> That's his scale. Now, his scale is upset about that. But it's a little, in other words, so for your scale, it doesn't backfire. It makes it more popular. These ma'asim simliyim and these guys. What? Right. Right, so that's something they're not happy with because oh, it's too confusing with it. Uh, that's, that's, that's something else, right? They're too easy. They, what is he doing? Tell us straight out. That's a different reaction to the people. So, it's very possible. Anyway, that Masim um, Sivit. Just a few more interesting, more different opinions. We have Rabbi Eliezer Bebelkin. See, he says everything's little. You had to do hard things, simply, literally. All these things, a little bit similar to Abba Ben Yosef. Kaspi has an interesting um, middle ground. Rabbi Yosef Ibn Kaspi. He says, yes, they happen. Now, Ibn Kaspi was a radical rationalist, as we think. But it's interesting here, he says they happen. But he says that, uh, yes, they happen. But, you know what? What have What happens when the Yehazkel has to sleep on his side for 390 days or 40 days? How's that possible? So he, what he tries to do is, no, no. You don't have to sleep all day, every day. Every day, leave the other side for a few minutes. For 390 days on one side, and one is another. In other words, if it casts me, what is he trying to do? Make it literal. Depart from Harambam. But make it rational. In other words, that's the interesting middle ground that Ibn Kaspi tries to take. Right? Um, and, you know, so you have, um, now, Rabbi Menachem bin Shim'on, I'm going to talk a little bit about him tonight, more than most Mepharshim, um, understands that there are possibilities that there are d- different groups of Nebuot. And we'll break them up into three. Ones that seem from the Peshat, you know, the, the Masim Sibliyim, I've seen so many different breakdowns of them in trying to categorize them into groups, right? You know, just this one uh, commentary says, uh, personal things that Masim did in Nagut Shal Ravi, right? The Kshira Ba'avotim, meaning he's, the Navi is tied up Because of this, this the, the, those knots tie him up, that represents the Navi's situation. So he's giving over. Then there's personal things that talk about the Gur al-Ha'am. Gilu hazakan. I'm doing something that's going to affect you. I'm doing something, hey, that's going to affect me. I'm doing something that's going to affect you. Or there are non-personal things at all that just tell the people what's going to happen. Right? The, the, two, the two roads... The ascribing of the thing he doesn't, doesn't do it to himself at all. And this is going to happen to people. Others say, um, just an idea to bring forward the, uh, the to it seem, right? To bring forward this idea. That's one breakdown that you'll find. He has another breakdown in, in here. Where is this? He has a different breakdown. Well, different breakdowns on how, you know, how we can categorize the Masim Sinli. I'm not going to move forward on any of those. What I want to do is talk about three types in a different way. One, where it seems, where the pshat of the psukim seems to indicate more probable that it was a Masim Nebua. Another group where the pshat of the psukim seems to indicate that it actually happened. And a few where... They're sort of in between. We're not really sure. 
and the Mepharshim have to debate. And I want to just now go through examples of each. So let's talk about the ones that seem to be more clear that they're Ma'asei Nevo'ah. I think those are the ones in Perik Dalad and He. And I think that's why you have Rabbi Menachem ben Shimon and Haram Bam. When they list them, they're listing Perakim Dalad and He. Right? The Levena, the Mahavat. Why? What's missing in these situations? What's missing in Perakim Dalad and He? What don't we have? The reaction of the people. We don't have a reaction of the people. And we don't even have what? We don't even have an edut that the Navi did it. Mm-hmm. Where he's just told to do it. Mm-hmm. We never have the Navi describing that he did it. So it's true, these Ma'asim Simlim have to give a message to the people, but maybe it's a Nibwa message that he therefore told them, oh, this is what God told me to do. This is what I saw in a Nibwa. So in these situations, um, the Ma'asim Livna, the Ma'asim Mahava, the Shechiva, right, the food, it seems to be that there might be an indication here that they might lean more towards the Nebu'ah. Now, just a point. On the Ma'asim Mahavat, it's interesting. What happens with the Ma'asim Mahavat? He has to put it as what? As a symbolic separation between what? Himself and the Himself nation. And, and, the, and the nation? Or the right. Nation? So what does that separation mean? Like the siege? So, is it the siege? So therefore, there's two ways to, to read it. Um... There's two ways to read it. Most would say, Ibn Bal'am, Rabbi Yudab Ibn Bal'am says, this is, I represent what? It's between me and the people. What do I represent? The enemy? No. God. I represent God. That's Ibn Bal'am. I represent God. I represent the Navi. We are in a different world from you. Mm-hmm. But, if you look at Menachem ben Shimon, you'll find that what you said is true. It says here, Ahoma Beni, right? Hamahavat Beni, Benecha, or Ben Ahoma, Lahagen Alecha, Shelo Yuklu Lagat Mecha, Mi Bait Lair. This is sort of a protection, right? Protection for uh, the Nevi, so to speak. That's how he learns it. Um, protection from the enemy. Uh, for the Nevi, for the enemy? In other words, right. In other words, that the, the Kir Barzel, I'll read it again for you. Mahavat Barzel, Shem Klem il Hama Asui Kidmut Mahavat, Hakatu Shiagen Allah Bimagen Vesina. Sina. Protecting umilat kir hasikaf tov. When I talk to you, kir mahavat benecha or benahamal lagen alecha, shelo yuchlu lagat micha bayit leir. You, the Jewish people, represent. It's like a protective thing. Interestingly enough, I mean the context here seems to be in the wat puranut, but that's what he says. Um, when we talk about the shchiva, right? That's in psukim dal tahet in the same perek. Right again. He's told to do it. We never again see him do it, nor do we see the reaction of the people. 390 on one side for Yisrael, 40 on the other. Um, the Farshim bring down that the 390 represents Malchai Yisrael, right? The time of Malchai Yisrael after Shlomo. Mehmed uh, Shimon includes the years of the Shoftim. Um, he counts out the 40 years of Yehuda because that's a problem. It seems to be what is the 40 years of sinning of Yehuda? There should be more. Right? What's 40? You have already 55 of Menashe alone. So he takes tw- only 22 out of Menashe based on the Debrei Ayamim that Menashe was Hazar B'Tshuva, 2 of Amon, 11 of Yoyakim, and for some reason, he, and, he, and he takes, uh, until now, we're only in the fifth year of Sidkiyahu, that adds up to 40. So that, that's how he had come to that. that right? um, the food, the eating of the food, now, yeah, his kill com- complaints encourage some Mepharshim to say what? That that really happened. 
because otherwise why would you complain about it, right? Um, yet others um, uh, say, you know, no, it's also Nebuah, and there are, uh, I think it's Mohammed bin Shimon also, who says there are two ways to read that. Either it's mixed in the food, or it's used to cook the food, right? And not mixed in the food. Nevertheless, what does that Nebuah mean? Why would he eat such garbage? It, it again represents the Ra'av, that the Jewish people will be forced to eat all that junk. Right, they will eat anything. And that reminds us of the stories of the Gemarot, about Baichini also, how they had to, you know, Martha Baichini, she ate all sorts of junk and garbage. Um, the Tara Galavim uh, is the last of these Nebuot, which Harambam and others say was also the Nebuah. And that we know breaks up the people into three components. You have, again, two ways to look at it. Radak wants to get very specific. And he holds the people in the city, died by Av Ubedevir, Sidkiyahu, who tried to ex escape, or the ones who died by outside the city, says Radak, and the ones who died further by are Golem Mitzrayim, Yohanan ben Kareh, in other words. Other Mepharshim say it's a little, bit, a little bit more of a general idea. So that is the idea of those Nivuot. There are other Nivuot which would indicate strongly from the Navi that they most definitely probably happened. Right? And the three that I'm going to use here are Pirakim Yudbet. Over there we have the Nevoah of the Kleagola. The death of the wife, which seems to be and the combining of the etzim, the Yehuda etzim. Now, why would I say that these definitely happen? People react. So first of all, in these, take even, let's say, Klei Gola. One key thing is always, he says, Asir lecha Klei Gola uglei yomam le'enehem. That doesn't mean b'mar enevoah. The Nevi is told to do this le'enehem. It has to happen. They have to see this. Right? So, the Galita, right? In other words, so he's told. Show to them. Now, so, and then the Navi says, a little different, I did this. In other words, so you have, it's being told to be done, the Navi indicates that he did it, and what happens in Pasuk Ted, Ben Adam, Hello, Amru, Elechem, Yisrael, Bet Amina, Ma Ata Ose? And the people ask. So the idea of the Klegola, which was what was the Nibwa, what was happening here? What, what was the just, you know, I read it fast. What, what was the Nabi told to do? Right? Aselcha Klegola. What's that? Right? Right, you make this, what is this thing? Right, in other words, um, and, right, the drinking, a canister to drink from, and what do you do? You have to then do it, make it in front of their eyes in the day, and you're going to leave at night, Right? Right? So, this idea, and they'll see it, Kibbit Menihem, they do see it, he's told to do it in front of them, and they ask. Right? So, it seems to be, this would be a, um, so you, and there are two parts here to Enihem, you take out the Keli in the day, and then at night, Hatur Lecha Bakir, Right? 
ואין הם הכתב בלטה, תוציא פניך, תחשף ולא תראה את הארץ, כי מופת נתתיך לך ישראל. So there's two parts, um, and later the net, we're told what this means, in, in, after in the second part, פסוק ט', אמר אל כה אמר אדוני הנשיא, המסע הזה, ושלם יכול בישראל שהם עושים, אני מבטיחים כאשר תקן יעשה בגאולה בשבי ילכו. והנשיא אשר בוטרם אל כתב יישא בלטה ויצא בקיר, יחתרו להוציא בו פניו, יחסי יאללה אשר לא יראה לעין הוא את הארץ. Right? This they will indicate is uh, relevant to whom? To Sidkiyahu. For as tia to shti ala, and it passed me to the deal, be caught in my web, and it passed me to the deal, and it passed me to the deal, and it passed me to the deal, and it passed me to the deal. What does that mean, by the way, parenthetically, what does that pasuk mean? And it passed me to the deal. I'll take him to Babel and Ota lo yireh. What's Ota lo yireh? What? So Ota lo yireh could be Hosea on Babel. He won't see it. Why? Because he'll be blind. Right? That's one perush. Another perush. Ve Ota lo yireh. Right? So he says, Again, I'm in Menachem ben Shimon ba'avur. She yireh. Ya'aver enav melech Babel bivra v'yidabel ito mishpatim. ורבי יונה המדקדק הספרדי ז"ל אמר כי מילת אותה סימן לירושלים שלא יראה אותו אחר גלותו כי בבל ימות. רבנו יונה, אני חושב שהוא מדבר על בג'נאח. אז יש לי שתי דברים לראות על זה. That's of his wife again, for the same reasons, right? We see questions, we see what are you doing, we see the people reacting, and he's, um, uh, and, and he explains to them, right? Um, right? And, and we, we see that it does happen, and they say, I get, right, what, what are you doing? And he tells them, so it seems again, further it happens, We're not going to go over that one because we've explained that plenty when we gave the whole shi'ur last time just on that pitik. In the Ihodet Sim, right, where the two become one, I, I think also the two Eid Sim become one. I think also there's ample evidence here from within the pshat of the psukim that... Tell them this is what it means, right? Then what does he say? Okay. 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 So, in other words, it seems to indicate that what? That it's supposed to happen, right? Now, So that's interesting. Just to look at that pasuk, just as a side point. What does that seem to mean? Natural. You could have put them together and they look like one. But all of a sudden, then the Lashon is doubled. V'hayu l'ahadim b'yadecha. They will become one. We have a ma'aseh tiv'i that leads to a ma'aseh nisi. That's how many of the mefarshim um, uh, Right. Again, Menachem ben Shim'on. Ehad al-ehad tahabberem lihidamot l'etz ehad v'hayu l'ahadim mehubarim ki Hashem yahabber. Right. It was like this double... There's you do a natural event, and God's going to finish up with a... Um, thing. Now, the ones that can go either way, and from within the Peshat to the Psukim, so the eating of the Megillah. Right, the eating of the Megillah seems to be... But even Abarbanel there. Even Abarbanel says eating means internalizing and learning. Right, so many, most of the Mepharshim there don't take that literally. They look at it as an internalizing of the words of the Nehuah. Right? 
Menachemin Shimon over there says it's forced. The idea of the forced eating, meaning that you, you have no choice. Um, uh, the Maaseh Avotim, the tie being tied in the knots, Radak, again, over there, it's not so clear, right? Um, there's a small, that's really in Gimel 25. We look over there. They did it to him. They did it to you. Don't go in them. Meaning, it seems to be... So the doc looks at it over here as, as, as a metaphor. And he says, but it's a metaphor that, that re represents something that really happened. In other words, there's no actual knots, but... The, the metaphor is what? It's as if they tied you up. Menachem ben Shimon also brings two perushim. As they're not listening to you, they tied you up. And then he says, no, they're literally going to tie you up. The, the mashal and the mashal is the same almost together, so that you can't speak. So it'll be like what happened to Yirmiyah, right? In other words, incarcerate you. So it didn't necessarily happen now, but it's a prophecy of something that may actually happen as a mashal and nimshal biyahad. It's a little unclear because, as we, in other words, it, it repeats itself again in Dalid Het, Vine Natati Alech Avoti. I put. Velo Tafech Mitzidichat Sidichat. That's when, you know, tied up when he's on his line. So again, the Avotim can be uh, either way. In. Um, in, in, in the Perek of Aleph 23, so that's the, oops, again, i got to get heavier paper <laughs> here. You know. In um, Kaf Aleph 23, we have another Ma'asis Simli. So the idea here, I'll just read with you again, one last time here. Again, the perush of Menachem ben Shimon, and he says, very explicitly here. Mata perish a shim and a vi lama tsibahu la sota de rahim, Mervavin. She pillar had me by shim sival and a vi. She assay o tapuranu tehila. It's clear that he views this one as an actual action that actually happened. It's not problematic at all for him to do it anyway. So there's the idea, sometimes the Pshat of Zukim, I, I don't think there's one, you know, notwithstanding the general introduction I gave that there are different methods and take different approaches and different things. And maybe if you follow, let's say, the Rambam and the Ibn Ezra, the halu could be when it's weird or when it's not weird, right? Now that that, that could be their halu when you, when the navi is going to look strange for doing it or not. But I think if you take it one by one, even within the pshat of the psukim, even some of the strangest nevuot and the number one strangest one is losing his wife and not sending avail. Um, the pshat of the psukim make maybe a different halu. That sometimes it's clear. The, from within the pshat that it had that seems to be it's happening it's le'emehem it's done it's said sometimes it's close like Ibn Ezra points out like Harambam points out himself in the more the prakim del den he are close to at least the psukim of Marot Elohim although Abar Banel says no Aleph is Marot Elohim these are not and how, why would Yehazkel complain whatever it is and but at least there is what to indicate there is and then there's some bodidim 
that really could go either way. Um, we've covered almost all of them. There are a few I didn't, but we've covered almost every Ma'asis in Lini Haskel, looking at what they mean a little bit and whether they are simply Nebuot or not. Baruch Atalai, Amen.